Uh, Catherine, just give us a, a quick wrap, if you will, so far about what we've heard uh, so far from these two very different opinions uh, uh, from the European Union, from these two different groups, the more conservative group, the EPP, and then the socialists. Exactly, yes. Just to explain to our viewers, the people that we're hearing from now, these are the leaders in most cases, and, and for others, the representatives of uh, each political group that sits in the European Parliament. All the MEPs that get elected belong to one of these groups. So the first person that we heard, Manfred Weber, he's German, he represents the European People's Party. Uh, he's from Angela Merkel's party. And the EPP, the European People's Party, is the biggest group in the Parliament, so he gets to go first. Um, I think our viewers who are listening might have heard he started off with some quite nice words for President Macron saying that they broadly agree on uh, a lot of the big areas there. But I found it quite interesting that he went on to be very critical um, of uh, the European Council. So that's the body that en encompasses all the heads of state and government of the EU. They get together for those summits and make a, a lot of the key decisions that can't be taken here in the Parliament. Uh, so on, on foreign policy, for example, if, if there are going to be sanctions on a country. He's very critical of the European Council saying, look, you know, there's been a lot of stasis really, uh, an inaction. Uh, for example, on Russia, which is such a present issue, we've all talked about it today, uh, but he said, we've known about President Putin's actions for many years and the European Council hasn't done anything. So he called on President Macron to go back to the European Council, which he's presiding over for six months, and, and push for some real action there, put a rocket up them. Another big issue that he spoke about, um, rule of law in the European Union, one of the big issues that Emmanuel Macron brought up. Uh, Manfred Weber saying, look, here in the European Parliament, it was several years ago that we voted for you in the European Council to take action against Hungary because of rule of law degradations. Absolutely nothing has happened. He was really quite stern and critical about that. Uh, and. Uh saying, you know, the council has to deliver what the parliament, the elected body, has asked for. And then something where I thought uh, I was actually somewhat surprised myself to hear him uh, talk about this. Uh, he was saying about uh, Emmanuel Macron uh, as French president, uh, pitting progressives and extremists against each other. He said um, that that's something Macron has done in the past. And then he went on to evoke uh, Macron's uh, competitor in the French election, Valérie Pécresse. Now, she's from uh, Manfred Weber's political family, the European People's Party. Uh, and he was saying uh, he thinks that uh, Valérie Pécresse uh, could be a better person uh, to take on extremists. He thinks that Macron pitting progressives against extremists is the wrong way to go. He said that he thinks Macron could be encouraging the rise of extremists by doing that. There was uh, some noises around the chamber. I think there were quite a lot of other people who were perhaps a little bit surprised to hear Manfred Weber bringing in the French presidential election in this context of this European Parliament uh, visit. Uh, but then he uh, did end on a, a nicer tone saying, you know, I do like your ideas for Europe generally. But we are going to hear as we go through these heads of these groups, um, you know, obviously they're going to be bringing up their own political issues. Uh, so we're going to be hearing in, in decreasing order of size of these political groups in the parliament from each of them. So we'll go through the Greens as well, the far left, uh, the far right as well as uh, this uh, session passes. Indeed. And we'll be hearing from Yannick Jadot, who is the head of the Green Party, who's also a French presidential candidate uh, in just a minute or two, uh, Kat. But just before we go to him, if you will, uh, there is a bigger context here of the French presidential election. You mentioned Valérie Pécresse, also Yannick Jadot, now another candidate. How much of a role is that going to play during this six-month presidency for France? I mean, it's going to play a really massive role. Firstly, just in terms of the calendar, France, the French government, is supposed to be presiding over a whole bunch of meetings and summits uh, at the European Union, at the European Council level. Uh, and it is cutting its own calendar short by having a presidential election right in the middle of this period. France did not have to have the EU Council presidency right now. They could have asked for the calendar to be moved around, but the French government said, no, no, we would like to do both at the same time. There is a huge amount of uh, suspicion among President Macron's opponents that he is using this as a platform uh, for campaigning. Of course, uh, as you and our viewers probably know, President Macron is not officially a candidate for April's election, uh, but he is, of course, expected that he will announce his candidacy very soon. Uh, and so uh, for, for that reason, uh, a lot of the people we're going to be hearing from today will be uh, French politicians. As you said, Yannick Jadot is about to speak for the Greens. He himself is a candidate who'll be going up for election in April.
Thanks so much for that, Catherine Nicholson, reporting for us there from uh, the European Union Parliament in Strasbourg.